In this problem, we have two charged particles arranged as shown in the diagram. Particle one has five excess electrons and so is going to be negatively charged. Particle two has six excess protons and is going to be positively charged. As a result, each particle experiences an electric force of 2.97 times 10 to the negative eight newtons. And we're going to be approximating the particles as point charges. Okay, so our first thing to do is figure out what is the directions of our forces going to be? We know that particle one is going to be negatively charged since it has five more electrons than it has protons. We know particle two is going to be positively charged since it has six more protons than electrons. Since we have opposite charges, we're going to have attraction between our particles and particle one is going to experience a force to the right. Particle two is going to experience a force to the left. So we can add that in here, force to the right for particle one and a force to the left for particle two. We can also answer this question at the bottom right now. It asks, how does the magnitude of the force on particle one compare with the magnitude of the force on particle two? So the answer to this question is that they are equal. Some people make the mistake of thinking that particle two will experience a bigger force since it has a bigger charge with six excess protons rather than five excess electrons. However, the equation, which we'll look at now for electric force is, the electric force is equal to K, a constant, multiplied by Q1, the charge of the first particle, times Q2, the charge of the second particle, divided by R, the distance between the particles, squared. And here you can see it doesn't matter which way around I put Q1 and Q2. Since they're just multiplied, I'm going to get the same electric force out at the end. So as a result, the electric force between two charged particles will always be the same for both particles, no matter what the charges on each of those particles. It's the same as the idea of gravity. The gravitational force between two objects is the same for both objects. It doesn't matter if one has a much bigger mass than the other, they still experience the same gravitational force towards each other. Okay, so we can go ahead now and fill out our work table with any givens and then go ahead and calculate out our missing variable. So in the question, we're given the electric force between the particles as 2.97, times 10 to the power of negative eight. Our unit there is Newtons. K, I mentioned that's a constant. It's the constant that's gonna be the same for every single question. And you need to remember this one. It's nine times 10 to the power of nine. And the unit for that is going to be Newtons meter squared per coulomb squared. So that K is gonna be the same in every single equation we do, nine times 10 to the power of nine. Q1 is the charge on our first particle. Now it tells us here it has five excess electrons. So we know the charge on the particle is going to be negative five multiplied by E, which is the elementary charge. To get our charge in units of coulombs, which is what we need in order to put it into our equation, we're gonna to have to multiply out by the elementary charge. So it's going to be negative five multiplied by the elementary charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. That's going to give us an elementary charge of negative eight times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs for particle one. In our equation, we just put in the magnitude of the charge. We don't need to include the negative sign. So I'm gonna put that over here as just eight times 10 to the power of negative 19. And again, our unit for charge is coulombs. We'll do the same for particle two. This has six excess protons. So that's gonna be a charge of plus 
6e. So we need to multiply out by e the elementary charge, which will be 6 multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. That gives us a charge of 9.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. So that's our Q2. Our unit is coulombs. The last variable here, r, that's the distance between the centers of the particles or the objects in question. And that is our question mark. That's what we're trying to find. So if we have a look at our equation and just check, we have the force F, we have K, that's our constant. We have Q1, that's a charge of particle one. We have Q2, that's a charge of particle two. And we're trying to find R. So we just have one unknown variable and we can solve this using what we know so far. So now we just need to rearrange our equation to get R on its own. So first, since R squared is on the bottom of the equation, I'm going to multiply by R squared to get it on the top so we can deal with it there. So that's going to get me R squared multiplied by F equals K times Q1 times Q2. Next, to get R squared on its own, I'm going to divide by F on both sides. So we just have R squared on the left. So that gets us R squared is equal to K times Q1 times Q2 divided by F. And then lastly, I have R squared, but I just want to find R. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So that'll give me equation of R is the square root of k times q1 times q2 over f, square root of that whole thing. So now I've got my equation in terms of r, I can put in my numbers. So let's do that now. That gives us r equals the square root of k, which is 9 times 10 to the power of 9. multiplied by Q1, which is the charge of particle one, eight times 10 to the power of negative 19, multiplied by Q2, which is a charge of particle two, which is 9.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. And then we're gonna divide all of that by F, the electric force, which was 2.97 times 10 to the power of negative eight. I'm doing the square root of all that. When you put that in your calculator, just be careful to make sure you're using parentheses where necessary. We wanna make sure everything on the top is multiplied and then divided by everything on the bottom and then square root that whole thing, not just the top, of the fraction square root the entire fraction. Once you put that in your calculator, you should get out an answer of 4.83 times 10 to the power of negative 10. And our unit for the distance is going to be meters. So when you're solving one of these problems, whatever the unknown variable is, you're gonna go through the same steps which is to identify all the given variables, including K, which is the constant nine times 10 to the power of nine and is the same every single time. Then you can identify what's the missing variable. What are we looking for in our equation? Rearrange our equation to get that variable before putting our numbers in.